Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing something a little different. We are going to be using the trending AI chat GPT to generate some crochet patterns for us to make. I first saw this idea on Instagram Reels actually by Axolotl Chicken Crochets and Tiny Bunny Crochets. They use chat GPT to generate a crochet frog with varying results and I thought this was just such an interesting and unique and funny idea and it actually turned out really cute so I'm inspired by both of them to try it out myself I've never actually used ChatGPT before so I don't know much about it so let's just dive in and see what we can get it to make oh okay I have to sign into an account Okay, okay, loading, okay, gotta verify my email, checking my browser, love it, love to see it. Okay, gotta verify my phone number. Okay, so it's giving me a little bit of a warning here. While we have safeguards in place, the system may occasionally generate incorrect or misleading information and produce offensive or biased content. It is not intended to give advice. Very interesting. Well, what about crochet patterns? I think the first thing I want to ask it is not a specific animal or thing, but just if I say, make me a crochet pattern of a cute animal, what will it give me? Write me a crochet pattern for a cute animal. Sure, here's a crochet pattern for a cute animal. Let's make a cute little bunny. Okay, we're making a bunny. Materials, worsted weight yarn in your desired bunny color. We're using a five millimeter crochet hook, safety eyes, uh, fiber fill, yarn needle, scissors. And it looks like we're gonna be making a modular pattern. So a head, body, and ears. And then at the end, we will assemble it. And it says, there you have it, a cute little bunny crochet pattern. Enjoy making your adorable little animal friend. So, you know, giving us some words of affirmation, some encouragement. So, it's hard to tell exactly what this is going to look like at this point. It looks pretty legit to me, so I think we should just start making it and see what happens. We're going to start with the head, and it looks like we're going to start by doing a magic ring we all love the magic ring it's very important okay then we're going to increase in each stitch around so this is like a pretty pretty typical i'd say pattern so far so one two three four five six Increasing our circle piece by piece. Round four, we are going to just continue doing this. So single crochet in the next two stitches, then increase. So we got our circle. And six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So something that's really interesting about this whole AI debate, specifically with something like crochet, is that Crochet itself, like the actual hand movement of crochet, making it by hand, is unable to be replicated on a machine. And that's actually different from knitting, apparently. And I don't really know why. I watched a video about it, trying to explain it, but I did not really understand the mechanics of why it's not possible, just that crochet uses so many different individual movements and muscles and you have to get the stitch tension and yarn tension just right. And the machine, even in prototype, was only able to replicate a crochet stitch successfully with a really low percentage, like way lower than a human could actually do it if you just took the time to learn. So I think the difference between AI art and generating a crochet pattern, for example, is that AI art, you can make look 
almost exactly like digital art, even though it is just taking what is out there and it's unable to make anything new, I think you could be still pretty easily fooled if you didn't know something was AI art. Because visually, it would look almost pretty much the same as digital art. And I think that's honestly one of the really sad outcomes of AI in that it can be made to look so similar to digital art that people, that real artists are spending so much time doing and learning and perfecting as a craft and then AI just comes along and is basically just ripping off so many artists and using their work to train these AI models without their consent, especially small independent artists whose work is most at risk. But because crochet is strictly a handicraft that can't be replicated by a machine, the only thing that AI can help us do in this case is replicate a pattern. So even though we are asking a machine to give us a pattern, this is still very much a handmade craft and will continue to be for the foreseeable future, I hope. Okay, so we have the beginning of the rabbit head, it looks like, from the top of the rabbit head at least. And for round 11, it looks like we're gonna be starting to decrease every three stitches. So single crochet, four three stitches, and then decrease. The next step says insert safety eyes or embroider eyes using embroidery floss between row, round eight and nine, leaving three stitches between the eyes. Here's what it looks like right now. And now we're going to start stuffing it with a fiber fill. Fasten off, leaving a long tail for sewing, weave the tail through the remaining stitches and pull tight to close the opening. Okay, the head of our cute bunny is complete. I think now we can move on to the body. The width is just 18 stitches, so it's going to be a lot smaller than the head. I think that's going to look a little interesting, but we are trusting ChatGPT, so trust it we shall. This is going to be the width of the body. So let's just think about that for a second. Honey's looking a little small. That is four rows of 18 stitches. So now we are going to be decreasing again. <laughs> oh no. Here is our beautiful rabbit body. Much to think about. Much to think about. And now, lastly for this pattern, we are gonna make two ears. Here's what we got so far for the bunny ear. Can't say it looks much like a bunny ear, but I don't know, who knows? We're not done yet. Maybe magically this will, this will turn itself all around. Again, can't say that this looks much like a rabbit ear, but maybe if we kind of like, you know, stretch it like that, hmm? maybe? May I introduce to you our AI rabbit alien friend? Drop some name suggestions in the comments below, please.
You know, overall, I am pretty impressed that it gave us a coherent pattern that we could actually follow, and it gave us all the technical parts of making a plush bunny. You know, we got the head, body, ears, and face, you know. Some constructive criticism for our friend ChatGPT, I would say the body could be a little bit bigger. Another suggestion, maybe make the ears so they're not perfect circles. It does kind of look like a dog toy. It does kind of look like Little Big Planet. It does kind of look like a mouse. But it created something. And, you know, technically all we did ask it for was a cute animal. And this definitely looks like an animal, somewhat. And it is cute, so... After making the bunny, I decided I wanted to try one more animal, so I asked ChatGPT to make a pattern for a chick, thinking that maybe a simpler shape would yield better results. This pattern actually was much harder to follow though, and had much less detailed instructions than the bunny. In fact, the order of the steps was a little wonky too, so it was a good thing that I had read the pattern through all the way beforehand, as well as being able to lean on my prior experience making amigurumi. But even then, well, you'll see what happened next. Do you want to see the birth of something even more cursed? Yes! That's a wedgie! That looks like Dobby's head. Oh my god! <laughs> So, this was an interesting experiment. I'm very glad I did this because I think we've learned a lot today. One really interesting thing to me is that ChatGPT seems very much to know what pieces are required for each of these animals, like it knew ears, head, body, face, it knew body, wings, beak, but the proportions of each thing together was where it struggled most. So obviously the wings of this creature are a little too, a little too, but it knew that it had to have wings. I know that the use of AI in any creative medium right now is a pretty hot debate, but my honest opinion, in all seriousness, I don't think that AI is ever really going to be able to replicate human creativity. And maybe I don't know enough about tech to make that opinion because, like I said before, I majored in sociology and writing, but what I do know is that the best kind of human art comes from our lived experiences. It comes from our backgrounds, it comes from being inspired by other people, it comes from conversations we have and things we see in the world. AI just doesn't have any of that. It can only rely on what has already existed and what has already been created. I think that artists using AI alongside their work is really cool and it's fun to experiment to see what this technology can do. But overall, I think it's safe to say from today's experiment that crochet pattern writers, their jobs are at least safe for now. <laughs> what should I name these? I feel like they could have really inspiring, beautiful names. And with that, as always, thank you so much for watching my videos, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!